evening and welcome to our evening service of Compline at St Thomas's Church in Mellor, uh, near South Manchester. My name's David Shercliffe and I'm one of the ministers of the church here. You're very welcome to our service, um, as, as is our tradition, and we find very helpful um, is to light a candle. So I'm going to light a candle for me to give me focus, and I hope if you've got one as well, that you will do so as well. Let's just be quiet as we start to realise that we are in the presence of God. I've been asked um, by uh, a few folk to just go through Ignatian spirituality again, just to help us focus and think about being aware of God. And if you remember what we were saying about the practice of examine, and this is our chance to really be intentional about communing with God as we come, just to get out of just doing things for habit, but being intentional. So the, the five steps of the examine and hopefully you can join me in this. It's just letting your mind be, be clear of the things that may have worried you for today, but just for one moment, let's breathe carefully, deeply and start to allow ourselves to be aware of God. And that's an intentional thing to do. Welcome God into our presence and into your presence wherever you are. You can feel God close to you. And start to allow God to show you how God sees your day this day, the day that the Lord has made. Can you see the events of the day and see how God would see them and maybe contrast them with the way you've seen the day? Maybe it opens your eyes a little. And as God is good and looks for the goodness in all, it brings a, a welling up of thankfulness for the things that we have, even if it's just our security and that we've managed to get through today. But we are very blessed where we live and we have all sorts of things to be thankful for the things that have blessed our day today. Let's just fill our hearts with thankfulness. Count your blessings. now full of a sense of God's presence and a sense of thankfulness for what we've been given. Let's think back ourselves now on the day, but in the awareness that God is opening our eyes to our day, and carefully looking back at certain things, things that catch your, catch your thoughts already, what happened today? Ask for the Holy Spirit to illumine us to what's important. Illumine our thinking. Because surely she has promised to come and open our eyes if we let her.
And the thing about that is, of course, that all is laid bare. All the good things that you've done and thought and the great things you've, that you've experienced. Maybe there's something focusing in right now that's saying this is kind of ruined, a part of today. And it's time to just face up to it and say that it's wrong. Maybe there's some attitudes. Maybe there's some words that you said. Now let's though offer those to God so that they can be cleared away. Those are the things that are not of God. And let's accept that we're being restored and we're capable of breaking these things in the power of the spirit and that we're committed to being intentional about breaking those things for tomorrow and restoring ourselves through Christ by offering ourselves to him. And we look forward to tomorrow with God. And we move to our next Ignatian spiritual practice of Lectio Divina. Now this is after we're now ready to hear God's word. And of course, why do we read this book? Why do we um, put so much effort into hearing what the Bible says. Well, these are this is ancient wisdom which have been here for us. And we believe that this is inspired by God, maybe written by man and possibly women, but inspired us. So the word of God is here. Something is there to be said. So as we read, let's just read. I'll read it through and see what jumps out to you. And... What is God saying to you here? And as you read, you start to pray. What does God want to say to me? And what do I want to say to God? And at the end, be intentional about in expecting God to say something from his word. So I'll say just a few thoughts as I go along. Don't let me direct you entirely. It's just sort of giving you permission, as it were. So um, this is from Matthew, and this is the resurrection. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and um, the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly... There was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. Now that was some kind of event. Unbelievable, stunning. And I want to, I want to experience God in that way, in some way where I'm so aware of God that it's, it's, you cannot see, it's like a bright white light. And these days of darkness, and I want to believe that that's true, possible and true. And not to be dumb, but to be awestruck. And the angel said to the women, the men seem to be struck dead. But I want to be like the women and listening and being reassured in that situation. Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, 
he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Proof that Jesus is, is risen from the dead. The, again, the unbelievable thing is true. The basis of our faith, that death can be beaten. He's not here. He's been raised. As he said, he's told us that's what would happen. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, our bed, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. I love the thought that they could get hold of him and he wasn't just a ghost. And I love the, um, um, the great divorce by C.S. Lewis where it describes what's heaven like um, and heaven is more real than we are. So to get hold of Jesus would be to get hold of something more solid, more real than we are. We maybe appear gay like ghosts to those in heaven. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And Jesus appeared to them physically. And that seems like too easy, but we have so much evidence and so much to base our faith on and the encouragement of the word and it warms our hearts. So what is God trying to say to you through this? And what do you want to say to God back? What's on your heart? And as somehow we know that God is behind this, we say, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever, amen. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you enjoyed that, and um, I did. And I wish you a very peaceful and restful good night. <laughs>